Hey, what is up my chemistry people? It is Mr. Boylan, and what in the heck are we gonna do in this video today? One of my favorite things. Favorite thing. Nomenclature! Nomenclature! Writing formulas, writing names. Say my name, say my name! Uh, we are going to name and write the formulas of acids and bases using IUPAC nomenclature rules. As always, breaking it down a little bit, today we are going to first identify an acid as a binary acid or an oxy acid. Not very difficult to do. Dos! We are going to name common binary acids, oxy acids, and bases given their chemical formula. Writing some names! And then finally, numero three, we are going to write the formula for common binary acids, oxy acids, and bases given their chemical name. So just the reverse. I'm so excited. All right, so we are going to start with some acid nomenclature. The first thing we're going to talk about is binary acid nomenclature. Binary, of course, implies that we're talking about two things. One of those things for an acid, of course, is going to be the hydrogen ion. So when you write the name of a binary acid, you're always going to begin with the prefix hydro. Second thing is you're going to take the root of the name of the second element that is not hydrogen, and that root is going to follow the prefix hydro. And then three, you are going to change the name so that it ends with the suffix ick. So some quick examples. We've got HCl, binary because it's two things, hydrogen, chlorine. Again, the hydrogen is gonna be a dead giveaway that this is an acid and is gonna require acid nomenclature. Our first thing to do is start us off with the term hydro. The second element, chlorine, we're gonna take just the root, so it becomes hydrochlor, and then we're gonna change the ending to ick. So this is hydrochloric acid. Take a look at another example, HF. Binary, two elements, hydrogen indicating that we've got this acid, and one other element. Prefix, hydro. Second element, fluorine. Fluorine. Gonna use the root, which is just flor, flor. The ending becomes ick, hydrofluoric acid. Boom, binary acid. Then we got H2S. Again, binary acid. Hydrogen one other element prefix hydro second element sulfur the root is you might think sulf in fact we're going to keep the whole element name here hydrosulfuric is the name of this binary acid and if you're wondering to yourself well, how am i going to know where to cut it off am i going to just use sulf am i going to use sulf am i going to sulf you like where do you cut these things off it just takes some practice with time all things get better so hydrosulfuric acid is the name of this binary acid. If you're wondering why there are two hydrogens here instead of just one, that is a really good question. And the easiest explanation I have for you is just treat these binary acids as if they were ionic compounds. They're not truly ionic compounds, but let's pretend that they were. Sulfide would form a two minus charge if it were to form an ion and hydrogen is gonna form the one plus ion if it were to form an ion. And so in this example, we need two hydrogens for every one sulfide. If we go back to this other example, again, treat it sort of like an ionic compound, the fluoride ion is gonna form the one minus, while the hydrogen ion is gonna form the one plus. So here we only have one of each. So if you treat it like an ionic compound, Boom, you've got your answer. Okay, second thing to tackle is this idea of oxy acid and oxy acid nomenclature. It is an acid that is a compound of hydrogen, of course, because by definition, our acids are something that will donate a proton, donate a hydrogen ion into solution. Uh, but now we're gonna have oxygen and a third element, usually a non-metal. And typically, that oxygen and third element make up a polyatomic ion. So the nomenclature for oxy acids typically follow the name of the polyatomic ion that's involved in the acid formula. The easiest way to understand how that system of nomenclature works for polyatomic ions is just think of the following terrible diseases. Meningitis, hepatitis, and the most treacherous of all, adicitis. <laughs> In other words, what you're gonna do is if you have a polyatomic ion that ends in eight and it's part of an acid, you just change the ending to it. Conversely, if you've got a polyatomic ion that ends in it, you change that ending to us, O-U-S. 
So you can remember this sort of sort of mnemonic device, adicitis, tragic nomenclature disease. It will help you in the naming of oxy acids. As you look at your notes, there's sort of a breakdown of the different uh, prefixes and suffixes that you will see in the oxy acids and how they correspond to the polyatomic ions. Again, notice, again, notice here, anytime you see it in the polyatomic ion, it corresponds to us in the oxy acid. And anytime we see eight, it corresponds to ick in the oxy acid. So let's take a look at this oxy acid. It's not binary, but I can identify it as an acid. We start with that H. The rest of this makes up the polyatomic ion hypochlorite ion. Again, just remember itis ites become us. This is known as hypochlorous acid. It's just the hypochlorite ion attached to a hydrogen ion. Again, let's do HClO2. Identify that this is an acid because we're starting with that H. Not binary. We've got a polyatomic involved here. This one is the chloride ion. Again, remember atic itis, the ites become us. So HClO2 is simply chlorous acid. Again, HClO3, the polyatomic ion involved here, is the chlorate ion. Adic itis, this time we're going to ic, chloric acid, HClO3. One more time, HClO4, this is known as the perchlorate ion. We can identify this is the perchlorate ion within this acid molecule. Boom, perchlorate. And so, adic itis indicates this would become perchloric acid. So, once again, just driving this home, Anytime you're given an oxy acid, find the polyatomic ion, any of the ites in that polyatomic ion become uses, any of the eights become ics. Adic itis. Okay, now we're going to talk very briefly about base nomenclature. This is fairly easy because it is something that you should already know. When we are naming strong bases, typically we're going to be talking about ionic salt that have an alkali or alkaline earth metal, uh, ionically bonded to the hydroxide ion. Uh, and we're just gonna follow normal ionic nomenclature rules. So things like NaOH, sodium hydroxide. So we should identify, of course, that this is ionic compound and we should be able to, and we should be able to recognize at this point that this is the hydroxide ion. Example number two, recognize that this is an alkaline earth metal called calcium. This is our polyatomic ion called hydroxide. Recognize following conventional ionic nomenclature rules, we have two hydroxides here because remember the calcium ion carries a plus two charge while the hydroxide ion only carries a one minus charge. Okay, and then lastly, just recognize there are many, many weak bases. Uh, for this class, you will only need to know those polyatomic ions that act as weak bases that you have, that we've already discussed. For example, sulfate ion acts as a weak base. So nothing really new here. The only thing you need to watch out for is a weak base that's commonly used called ammonia, NH3. And that's sort of the common name that is thrown around. Sort of like how water isn't called dihydrogen monoxide, we just call it water. And a lot of times students will confuse ammonia with ammonium ion. So just be on the lookout. This is a really common weak base that we'll use a lot in the lab.